chat. We're 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 watching this Jackie Poo video. Okay. Um. Am I retiring from YouTube? Probably going to talk a lot about burnout. Burnout is something I'm passionate talking about because I experience it all the time. Because I'm really bad at um, cutting myself off on stream. I'm like, no, I need to stream. No, I need to. I need to stream. I need to make YouTube videos. I need to make shorts. No, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to stream. I'm going to be inconsistent. You know all that shit. So yeah, let's fucking hear what Jack's got to say about it. Uh, unless he's talking about something totally else. Also, don't look at the preview of the video we're watching later. Okay, Jesus Christ. Thought I'd make because. Oh, sorry. <laughs> let me rewind. Here's a video I thought I'd make because there's been a lot of discussion about it this year talking about retiring from youtube because a lot of people have asked me three years so do what did you have a different name or am i tripping me over the last few months when mad pat left r.i.p i put out a <laughs> P. tweet because in his video he talked about doing youtube for a third of his life and i realized that youtube was a third of my life and that um yeah youtube's been half of my life Oh, oh, fuck yeah. So I actually remember you, bro. Fuck yeah. Kind of like freaked me out. But I tweeted that kind of knowing that people were going to get weird about it. I poked the nest <laughs> purposefully. But just to allay any fears, no, I'm not retiring from YouTube. <laughs> At least yeah. not yet. Oh, come on. I do intend on retiring <laughs> at some point, but not right now. But I think it's an oh. interesting discussion because I have legitimately thought about retiring at the start of this year because the MatPad video came out and oh. Tom Scott's video came out oh. and I was watching all of these and I could relate heavily to what they were saying and what they were talking about and being in that part of your life where it feels like, yeah, I've kind of done what I wanted to do with it. I think it's time to move on from it, but I didn't really feel like I was ready to. And I've had sort of a tumultuous relationship with my YouTube channel over the years. I think within the last five years, it's become apparent that I've struggled quite a bit with keeping up with content, keeping up with the passion, keeping up with the energy, keeping up with my audience. It's all become it's probably been more overwhelming in the last five years than it has been in the first five years of doing it because in the beginning i was just doing two videos every day five and a half years same time every day and it was dude five and a half years of two videos a day are you fucking kidding me bro you fucking kidding me you gotta you gotta like pat jack on the back though bro he really took the fucking gift that fucking pewdiepie gave him right and ran with it, bro, and did his own thing. He completely made that himself, and even before that, he was making it himself. He got that boost, and then he fucking... He went and fucking took on the fucking world, bro. He wasn't aiming for the fucking moon. He was aiming for the fucking stars, and he did it, dude. Easier to do. If YouTube was half of my life, I'd feel ashamed of myself, so you slay, TG. Yo, thanks, gangsta. Because everything just felt easier. It felt like I just sat down and was like, what do I record today? Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, Chucky, I think you said it perfectly. He could stop now and be good. Whatever he does now is pretty much fan service. Yeah, I think he literally is just fucking uh, doing it because he loves his fans, you know? Uh, I love Jack. He deserves the world. A few years ago, I went to an event he did in Seattle. Oh, that's awesome. Retired to the point of you make a video when you want and keep yourself... Where you want, ugh, it sucks. Not gonna lie, I hate the long hair, but I get it. Yo, me with long hair. I hate the long hair, but I get it, you know? <laughs> Have you noticed that some dudes get older, we grow out hair, grow our hair out? Oh, I love this look for him. He looks good. No diddy. <laughs> yeah, dude, too bad I'm not gonna have that option when my shit's cooked. This and this. But no, I do realize that. Do it, upload it, went to all my subscribers, everybody watched, great. And I oh yeah, two to five videos a day is fucking crazy, bro. I mean, not two to five videos, two videos uh, every day. Two to five videos. That's me, okay? Whenever I'm not spending on YouTube for trying to share a sensitive topic. Uh, yeah, Kobe, I, I think it's mainly just like he stays because like... He enjoys, like, you know, his fan base and everything. So I think you're both right. Grew my hair out? Yeah, bro. I grew my shit out. I grew my hair out for the first time last year. Never had long hair before, but I hated it until I ended. Oh, until... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see where you're going with this greenish. To grow to my shoulders? Yeah, bro. I'm so glad my hair's not long anymore. I mean, I thought it was okay, but I definitely feel better with my hair short. Also, I got welcome back, brother, for five years. Five years is crazy. Every day, wake it up. 
Do two videos today. Or waking up and recording a bunch. Okay, I'm thinking again for the sub, by the way, bro. <laughs> In the Sorry, last I keep pausing, Jack. Five years or so, it feels like the stuff that I used to do stopped working. I had like an oh. analogy for it, and I I love an analogy. <laughs> this he's like a wizard slut for analogies. Yo, what? He's like a wizard slut love for an analogies. Analogy. <laughs> this is the shape of me, and this is the mold of YouTube, okay. and my shape fit into the mold perfectly a lot oh. of stuff was just like really clicking gaming was popping off that high energy type of content was really in demand for a lot of people in the audience and over the years the sort of mold of youtube has morphed and shifted and evolved and that shape didn't really fit the mold anymore so things got five years ago that would have been 2019 a little harder to do i had to overthink my content a bit more algorithms started to become a thing that i just never really had to think about before so i was struggling quite a bit to figure out where i sort of fit in the ecosystem and i tried the thing of appeasing to the algorithm for a couple of years and doing things like reaction content a lot more and i'm gonna be honest with you if like if what you're doing you don't enjoy but you're trying to fit the uh when you're, if you're trying to just follow the algorithm and you don't, you aren't doing something you enjoy, it's so fucking painful, bro. Like, I really have enjoyed making React content because I've also, uh, I also have enjoyed consuming, uh, React content. And there for a while, I was on a big gaming vibe. I'm probably going to hop on another gaming vibe and hop on a React vibe and then try new shit that other people are trying, but... Like, if I didn't like it, oh, man, that'd be fucking hell, dude. That'd be hell. If I wasn't genuinely enjoying doing this shit and talking about this and consuming this kind of stuff, that would, that would suck. Uh, it's going to suck in 10 to 20 years when the younger careers try to surpass the careers that we grew up with. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't even say 10 to 20 years. Some people have already done it, you know, like Mr. Beast with, like, PewDiePie and shit. I just didn't really know what I was doing. I but I get what you're saying, absolutely. I know where I sat in... The ecosystem i didn't know what type of content i wanted to do i didn't know what the audience wanted and i struggled really heavily with that for a while and sure some stuff did do well but it felt really cookie cutter and not yeah what i wanted to do so i got burnt out and it there's a big thing on youtube about taking breaks and like looking after your mental health and i feel like i've been good at that i feel like i've sort of pioneered that in a way of like taking <laughs> breaks healthily for myself and being very vocal about my mental health and talking about it but what sucks is that algorithmically and business-wise i grew up with scene in the 2008 to 2009 youtube oh my god bro chris will need a wig yeah amen found it funny mr beast spent a bunch of cash and did multiple things trying to get people subs and he jumps up and passes him yeah kind of crazy it feels like it doesn't work sometimes it's just like oh the audience forgot about you or you stopped uploading so you're not in their feeds people realize that yo Thank you for the gifted membership, bro. You're a fucking real one. Oh, Josh got it. Fuck yeah, bro. The big spender. God damn. I appreciate you, Hobie. Thank you so fucking much. Oh, I'm just watching you because I've always watched you and I don't really want to watch you anymore. So you taking a break made me realize that and then move on to someone else. And Is that another membership, bro? Thank you, homie. Yo, Acacia got it. Let's fucking go, bro. Thank you so much. All of that stuff's fine, but when it comes to me making the content, it's like, man. When I come back from some breaks, it's like, it feels like people didn't miss me at all. It feels like the system's kind of working against me. Again, I don't know if that's just YouTube-wide or if that's just me and my channel specifically, but I struggled with that quite a bit as well. And I was like, well, maybe I should just leave. Maybe I should just quit. It's Yeah, that is true, bro. You feel like that. I'm going to be honest with you. The fucking YouTube channel, it may be because I like built it up on whatever, like not making the content that I'm making now, right? But my actual YouTube channel, if we go to the YouTube studio, oh my God, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to expose my statistics to you guys. If we go to it, I mean, it's up right now, but like, if we go over here to the videos, these videos would do way better on the other channel. This is 16 views, 1, 3, 15, 1, 3, 4. Like, they would literally do better on the slop channel. Like, they literally would do way better on the slop channel. Um, I think it's just like how YouTube systems work. It's, it's kind of like, uh, what have you done for me recently type shit. So it's kind of sad, bro. I mean, and I wouldn't say that to discourage someone from taking a break. You need to take a break. That's my own dumb fault because I didn't use it much, right? But still, it is it is very much of what have you done for me recently type of vibe.
I think the same thing happened with my TikTok account, to be honest. I'm not one of those people that are like, the system's against me. I'm not using that as an excuse for why I don't make content there because I'm trying to use YouTube again. Um, and I, I, I might make a new TikTok account just for that simple fact, but it is, it can very much be that way. So you got to like, uh, be smart with your breaks uh, and maybe make some content. That's why I think, um, video websites will last and be better for creators a long time instead of streaming. Cause for, you know, you can schedule posts on YouTube. You can schedule posts on TikTok. You, uh, I mean, Instagram, you can attempt, but meta has such a shitty fucking setup. Anyways. At least for me, it's never... Uh, I've tried multiple times to upload a reel. I've, it's only worked once for my computer. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's a what have you done for me recently type of thing. The way it sucks is the entire thing is that the game changes so fast now with trends and everything you do to keep trying to stay up with it is going to be harder. Finding your niche and staying there where you're comfortable and keep your audience is and whatnot is the real challenge, but also the goal. Yeah, I think the thing is, um, I think the thing is, is like you got to decide if you're gonna try and be like a a humongous, um, a humongous, humongous. Yo, what? Um, a big content creator, or if you just want to like grow enough to like be able to support yourself. Like for me, I don't give a fuck about being a big content creator. Like my ultimate goals is just to like make, um. A little bit more than a minimum wage doing this shit and uh like one day get a hundred thousand subscribers on a youtube channel like that's literally the goal for me you know whereas if you're like trying to get like a million subscribers and you're trying to make a shit ton of money and like do that kind of shit then you're going to be like you know trying to follow every trend or find to find trying to find new ways in or in your niche and niche down super hard you know by the way a big problem i have what is up with the new COD Warzone mobile? Uh, mobile games print money is why they made it, if that's what you're wondering. Odd guy. The lady from American Horror Story with the beard. Yo, you want me to do that, Purple and Chucky? That would be crazy. Okay, fine. <laughs> Sucks because the channel mm -hmm. still does really well. This is why I'm terrified to be a content creator. Link, don't, don't, I would say don't, don't stress about it. Just have fun. Do it. Send it. Try out shit. See what works for you, you know? If I didn't try shit, not that I'm successful or anything, but I literally went up like, almost 600 subs in 30 days on that channel. If I didn't try different shit out on that channel, the slop channel, the Christian TG 92 TV, that one right there. And anyone watching the YouTube thought, Hey, thanks. Love you. Thanks for being here. Um, then I never would have, uh, found what I've like, liked a lot, which is, you know, reacting to content, talking about shit, talking about serious topics and whatnot, but I don't have the tech or anything. I mean, shit. You could probably just make interesting vlogs of you chasing a storm and then literally show the graph from, like, the Weather Channel. If you made them entertaining enough, people would definitely watch. In my opinion, a lot of times the content is way less important. It's way more important about the personality as long as you can make content that people will click on, you know? That'll get their attention. Hey, cool. Well, maybe I should just leave. Maybe I should just quit. It sucks because the channel still does really well. Like if you look at the videos I'm doing and the stuff that I'm uploading, things do well. It sucks that I got into a headspace where whatever's going on with my channel or the system, it made me feel like the stuff I was doing sucked. And I think that's why this year I was like, okay, I'm gonna quit because I just don't really want to have to overthink my content. I don't want to have to like, appease a system like that. I, that's not the way I want to do my channel. But I decided, uh, okay, I'll give it a different shot. I'll do it differently. And that's why I've been doing like Dark Souls all in one video. Yeah. FromSoft games all in one video. I've been doing other stuff kind of all in one video because it's the type of thing where I Yo, get to do- Yo, Void, I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, I'm actually going on a road trip and then I'm going on another road trip on a tour with a band. So it should be fun, bro. How are, how are you doing tonight? Do what I want, do it in a way that works, and also it's just fun. It's a different way of doing it that I have in the past where I would just kind of, I called it carpet bombing my channel. And now it's a bit more fun to do, it's a bit more sustainable, <laughs> I can kind of like take. Dude, that's, I really want to do that. I want to do like long plays of games. I think those will do really well for whatever reason. I think it'll be cool if I literally make content about me playing a game like on stream and then make it around like people being able to put it on while they study or like sleep or whatever. Yeah. Uh, don't go into the content creation thing. Wanting it to be your job, to be honest, is the first thing I think of because then it will be a job and you'll just get angry if it 
falls short, truly go into it alongside your passions you have and things you want to do and see online. Yeah! That's fire, by the way, Link. Sounds good. I'm doing well. Got a, got a bit tomorrow myself. Going outside to the park. Ooh, hell yeah, bro. Take time away from doing it, but there's a lot of other stuff in the background, not even just for the channel and the way I do my content or the business side of things. The thing that made me want to quit first was because I don't know if people know this. I think I've talked about it a lot, but a lot of people still seem to not know this. I am horrifically depressed. <laughs> huh? And I, I say that oh. kind of hyperbolically because I like talking kind of exaggeratively and using hyperbolic terms all the time. I'm like legitimately clinically depressed and diagnosed oh. and gone to my doctor for it over the years and have been seeing a therapist for a long time and I'm medicated for it and all of that stuff. It's kind of like putting up guardrails for me. It's gotten better over the years where I've gotten better at dealing. Poor, poor Jack. With it, I kind of know what's happening to me. So I have tools to deal with it and going to therapy has helped me quite a bit, but I've just been kind of knocked on my ass. I'm terrible at comparing myself to other people. I'm wondering why my brain doesn't work the same as other people's, why my motivation lacks. Turns out it's because I have ADHD and I got diagnosed with that. And that helped in a way because it kind of made me go a bit easier on myself. But Bro, the fact that Jacksepticeye did everything he fucking did with depression and ADHD is crazy, bro. Is crazy. If you think about it, two videos a day for five years with depression and ADHD. That is crazy, dude. That's crazy. Listen, as someone who has a job that directly involves what I like to do, you need to take a break, but burnout is absolutely real. Yes. Yes, bro. Burnout, yeah. I think that, like, get a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life is it, some bullshit, okay? That's, whoever made that, whoever coined that phrase literally either had a super cushy job that they loved or they were somebody working at an, uh, like, office nine to five that just was like, if only I could have a job that I would love and I'd never work a day in my life. Because, dude, sometimes you burn out on shit, bro. You burn out on shit. Like, that's okay. It's a normal human thing. Like, it's just us as human beings. You burn out on shit. It's okay. But also, like, that's not real. You know, don't gaslight yourself and be like, oh my God, am I doing the wrong thing? Because I'm having a hard time doing this? Because I feel burnout? Like, no, dude, you're burnout. Yo, Hidden, love you too, King. Thank you for the lurk. I appreciate you. Can't wait to see Chris's 10 hour relaxing Minecraft long play, building a cozy cabin in the rain. No commentary, no ads. Oh, maybe no commentary, but the no ads part, brother, give me that monetization. Good, good news, it's over and you never have to deal with it again. Bad news, it's over and you never have to deal with it again. Yeah. Honestly, I would have never guessed he was depressed. He seems like a genuine and happy guy. It's the happy ones that feel the most pain. Yeah, literally. I'm doing that job I love and I have to work every single day of my life. They're fucking lying. <laughs> yeah, dude, they they aren't cap, bro. They're 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 sitting on they're they're sitting on uh, uh bullshit. But it doesn't help get work done and when things go wrong i catastrophize and i think that things are really going wrong i'm clinically diagnosed with like chronic anxiety as well like i'm anxious all the time even with my medication a trust fund baby made that quote that's crazy helps but i'm still anxious constantly i second guess everything i do i hate myself five times out of ten like half the time i'm just like man i suck why can't i do this i have an idea that i want to do but i don't have the motivation and the ambition and the energy yo to do it. metric what's up dude thank you so much for uh giving the stream a chance bro welcome in by the way if you prefer watching on the promo platform live streams i'm live over there first link in the description thank you so fucking much for being here dude appreciate you a ton do i even want to do this stuff and i'm just in my head a lot when i started off doing this i was really good at just kind of like going with the flow and being high energy and just being me and after a while you start getting those comments which is like man you're so loud man you suck man this person's better but after doing this for like 11 years that stuff just really chips away at me after a while and <laughs> Dude, I've been doing the YouTube shit for like a month, bro. That shit's getting to me crazy, dude. These motherfuckers are tearing me down so hard. I gotta like get on my ego death super hard. Like it does not matter what these little YouTube commenters say about me. But like sometimes it really do begin to me. Sometimes I gotta let that go, you know. I've been working on that a lot, but yeah. 
Again, another analogy, because I love them. I used to always think of it as like a statue that throwing like a couple of stones at it is like, oh, that's not gonna do anything. It's a statue, it's not gonna get affected by it. But after 11 years of doing that, eventually the, the cracks start to show and I didn't realize how much that sort of stuff was affecting me. And that's not to say like people shouldn't be saying that stuff. Some people are just not gonna like you. Even knowing that that's fine, I didn't realize how insidious it was and it was like getting under my skin and how much it was changing the way I did stuff. And I realized that the comments were affecting me way more than I thought they were. And I struggled with that a lot as well. I'm not impervious to criticism, nor do I think I should be exempt from it. That's fine to do because that is what we're doing. I know that's part of the job. And dude, Jacksepticeye literally like morphed a lot of who I am today. I'm not going to lie. Um... He was the person that, like, made me feel okay being loud. Like, no one else in my life ever did that. Like, I always felt like I was a nuisance or a pain in the ass and everyone hated me. But, like, Jacksepticeye was the one that was, like, loud and didn't give a fuck he was loud. Or at least seemingly didn't show that he that he gave a fuck that he was loud, you know? And it actually made me, like, secure and, like, comfortable in myself. So it, like, really makes me sad, like, hearing this shit of people shitting on him for being loud or whatever and just being him. Because, like, I know if he helped me that much, I didn't even watch Jack Septicai's shit ton because I didn't have the, like, ability to because I literally didn't have internet until I was, like, 15 years old. I would have to watch him at, like, McDonald's and at, like, whenever there's a free moment at church with headphones in, you know? Um, it just breaks my heart, dude. Have a good night. I'm going to sleep. I know you're going to make it big one day. Yo, Metric, you're so fucking real for that, brother. Sleep well. Have a great day tomorrow. Thank you for stopping in. Thanks for giving the stream a chance, bro. No, I didn't fucking see that shit, Josh. Uh, I refuse to be high energy because at this point, now nah, you're getting me as I am, accept it or go. I don't have energy for that. No, that's real, bro. But you, you are. Bro, how can kids get mad over adult-based humor or something else? Yeah, literally. It's realizing not everyone going to understand you are not trying to change that, TBH. Yeah. Just be myself and be okay with it. Not everyone's going to fuck with me or my ideas and shit. There's literally one dude doing his thing. Literally. Okay, after the nap, it's revolution. I'll put a clip in chat after the video of him talking about it. It's pretty short. Bet. Then the real kicker for me was when my dad died. Oh. And I'm not trying to, like, farm sympathy with this. Well, Josh, you might not have to put a clip in here but it is a really good sort of teaching moment for me. It happened and I was never terribly close with my dad. I never really had this super strong bonded connection with him because he was so much older. And I talked about it before where I didn't think it would affect me as much as it did. And then when he passed, I kind of extrapolated out my life and was like, okay, what, what do I actually want to be doing? And I thought about it more and more and I'm like, is doing YouTube like causing me more harm than it's doing good for me lately for my mental health? And then the stuff with the meme of, there was a meme going around if you weren't around back then or just weren't aware of it. It was everywhere where it turned into Jacksepticeye's dad is burning in hell was the spam comment that would show up and at first i was like i can't believe this is happening how do i stop this from happening and then i realized well it's the internet you can't stop it from happening if you talk about it it's going to make it worse because now people know that that affects you so you kind of have to just write it out and hope that it goes away and eventually it did it's not around anymore and spam comments i i'm happy that i communicated with youtube to bring in a stricter spam system because this was happening to me. So they let me kind of like test out some features on my channel for spam and it kind of worked. It didn't really, but that comment was everywhere. It would be like a Mr. Beast profile picture or another YouTuber. And it'd be like, Jacksepticeye's dad is burning in hell. Click here for something. I remember seeing them on like Charlie's channel, like Critical's channel and commentary and drama channels were picking it up and news channels were talking about it. And I was like, how did this awful thing that happened to me turn into a meme on the internet. And thank Bro. What the fuck, bro? What the fuck? Dude. Nah. 
That's crazy, dude. I literally, like, yeah, I didn't even fucking think about Why? What? What was even the point of it? Was it just to literally, like, fuck with Jacksepticeye? Why would you want to fuck with Jacksepticeye, dude? He's a perfect little angel, dude. He's our little Irish angel, dude. Why would you want to fuck with Jacksepticeye? Lord, please. <laughs> What's up, big dog? It's Barney. <laughs> it's Barney and How I Met Your Mother being like, I know we haven't talked in a minute, big dog. But please, <laughs> have some wrath on these people. Yo, what's up, Daily Clips? We're watching Jacksepticeye's video, Am I Retiring from YouTube? And then after this, we got, a, like, two more reacts lined up, maybe three. And then we're going to play some Buckshot Roulette or maybe Saints Row 3. Thanks for the Welcome in, dude. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. The worst part is TBH, yes, because they don't see him as a person. He's a character on the screen, literally. Yeah, I feel like that's how a lot of people see me in YouTube videos. Also, I don't need to send the clip. But I think it is better than the video because he calls them out. Oh, is Buckshot free? No, it's $1.20. A bunch of other people pointed out how ridiculous it was and how awful it was and how reprehensible it was. And I didn't have to speak up about it. But at the time, man, I was struggling so much seeing that all the time. I was like, I don't want to fucking do this. That's it. I'm done. I'm leaving. I am on Twitch right now. First link in the description if you want to come hang. Leaving. I can't do this job where so many people are allowed to say such horrible things about me and I'm just supposed to like sit there and take it. This fucking sucks. I just want to make content and have people have fun. I was legitimately like hovering over the nuke button where I was like, I'm done. My dad died. I want to make sure that- Abyss, Damn, thank you, you so much for the follow, homie. I appreciate you. Welcome in, dude. Did you come from uh, you daily clips? Yeah, I did. I was watching, me and Chucky were watching uh, Queso play it the other night. Abyss, thank you so much for the follow. Dude, welcome, bro. I'm not working all the time. Stressed out about what's going to work. Stressed out about my titles, my thumbnails. What content is going to, like, click for an algorithm. And I was like, that's not how anybody should be living their life. And I don't enjoy that. And I thought, I'm going to leave and I'm just going to do the things I want to do. I'm going to paint miniatures. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to watch movies. I'm going to play games in my spare time. I'm going to go outside more. And then going to therapy helped quite a bit to be like, okay, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. And I'm absolutely an all or nothing personality. I either do every <laughs> same, same. everything all at once, or I do none of it. I can't split my focus and my I, attention. I am so much the same way, and that's why I stream so many hours. And I'm so bad about it, dude. And it's a thing that I'm working on as well. But going to therapy helped me quite a bit to be like, okay, you can distance yourself from some aspects of it and then not have to give it up entirely and that's why i don't really go on twitter anymore i don't have twitter on my phone i deleted it over a year ago i haven't gone back to it i check instagram very sparingly i don't really use it i thought about it a lot where i'm like do i even enjoy this job do i even like doing this anymore is my passion even there and so much of why i started doing it in the first place had kind of like morphed and shifted and disappeared and so many people look at my channel and are like man you can upload whatever you want and it'll always do well and that used to be the case now i'm so proud of that but that's not really the case anymore like i have to think about what i'm doing more than i ever have in the past and like, that's not necessarily a bad thing either. Like the standards on YouTube have risen. Like stuff evolves and changes and you have to adapt to that. And the production values on YouTube and everything have just shifted and the editing styles have all shifted. So I just decided I want to do it in a way that is a bit more fun again. I have more stuff going on outside of my channel now that gives me joy. I do top of the morning which is a bit more fun to do. I have like the iris stuff, the ego stuff. We did comics. I can't see them. They're on pictures on my wall. I do comics now. I have a podcast. I have a lot more things that are kind of like creatively fulfilling me and I know when to take yeah. time away and when to take time for myself and not have it sort of cripple me. But dude, that's so sick. I feel like for me, that's kind of like doing photography and shit and just like hanging out with my girlfriend or my mom or my grandma. And just doing stuff outside of streaming and taking some time to breathe. Um, I do want to do more stuff. I want to explore more. I want to stream a little bit less. Or maybe I will stream a little bit more just doing different things on stream, you know? Will I learn not to cripple myself? Yeah, same. God, it me again, please. I need an answer. Yeah, dude. Me. I will retire eventually. At the start of this year, and I talked to MatPat in private about this, where I was like, man, I'm this close to like doing the same thing. I even had it in my head where I was like, I'm gonna quit this year. I'm gonna do the things that I wanted to do. 
and then I'm just gonna like peace out and dude, I'm having, I'm having ADHD right now with the fucking monitors and his eyes. Do other things like it would be the quitting type, like Matt's doing or Tom Scott's doing, where I would quit, but it would just give me more time to do the other things that I want to do. I definitely think I probably have about two years left in me at the very max of doing things the way I am currently doing them. I want to springboard to other stuff, do other creatively fulfilling things. I want to make bigger projects. I want to make like, I want to produce stuff. I want to make animated shows of games that I'm big into. Chat, will you guys still love me when I'm 40 and bald? Too. I want to, I want to do my own creative projects my own stories, my own characters. Eventually I want to write a book <laughs> and not like a book about my life, but like a novel sort of like fiction book. And I just want to do things that are a bit more creative than just uploading content all day, every day. And I thought about it for a while where I thought I had to keep my relevance on YouTube, like uploading consistent. Am I sad at 40 and bald? Um, no. I'm going to be lit at 40 and bald. What are you talking about? I'm going to be like, I got, I'm, I got a bald ass at 40. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna be showing butthole at 40 and bald, bro. You got five, max five more year or five, five year more of my love depends on how good you age. Oh, okay. We're, 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 I'm with that. Brings in money to do other bigger projects, but I just don't, I don't enjoy doing stuff in such a businessy way. I think it takes the creativity out of me and it takes <laughs> kidney stone passing stream at 40. All right, Jack, here we go. Ah! <laughs> it's the artistry out of the things that I'm doing, and I think that's why I get so burnt out on doing what I'm doing a lot of the time. But yeah, just so you know, I have been a minute to midnight closer than people even realize. So that tweet where I was like, man, I have been doing two minutes to midnight. In a third of my life, and people are like, oh, dear God, no, not you too. It was closer than it wasn't to me just being like, yeah, I'm done. I'm leaving. I, I don't really want to do this anymore. And the more I do it, the more I understand Jenna Marbles <laughs> and why she left. Um, and it is kind of like a tantalizing thought. But I do think I have more stuff that I want to get done and more things that I want to do with my time. And I, I have that personality where I always want to create, but I don't enjoy it all the time. It's not even a case of like, it's as fun as you make it. I just think the personality type that I have and the way my brain works struggles quite a bit with just existing and lumping stuff on top of it where so many people have access to me Yeah, is something that I wasn't really prepared for and I'm only now learning how to deal with. But therapy has been great and medication has been great. And going to my doctor about my anxieties has been great. I'm even trying like new inhalers right now and it's causing me to like tremor all the time. And my oh. health over the last few years has been dog shit where my asthma has been bad. I get migraines now that I've never gotten before. My eyesight had issues. And my doctor was like, it's probably because you sit at a computer all the time. And I'm like, Man, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. So, but just so you know, that's where I'm at. The people you watch online and the people you look up to and the people that you're watching on movies and everything are not bulletproof. But I'm also very well aware of the privilege and the position I'm in. And I don't want to ever seem like I'm ungrateful for what I'm doing. It's just, it's hard to do. It comes with a lot more than just putting in the hours and getting stuff done. And I do really care about the audience that have accrued and I want to connect more with you guys again I'm all or nothing where I like dump myself completely into my audience and then it's very parasocial and then it gets to me yeah. or I'm completely absent and I I'm using this year as kind of a way of bridging that gap a bit more and the FromSoft games all in one video idea has been really fun to do and I, I quite enjoy that and like the happy wheels all in one video for April Fools was a really fun idea to do so I want to do more stuff like that where I'm not sort of overthinking what I'm doing and second guessing everything and then committing to stuff that I end up regretting later. I don't know. Anyway, my mind's a mess and I don't really know how to deal with it most of the time, but hopefully some of you out there can relate to it and maybe other YouTubers can relate to it as well. I don't really have anything else to say. I've probably missed out on a lot of the stuff that I prepared to talk about. And once I start talking, I can't 
bring my thoughts all into a cohesive manner. Me for real. Me for and real. And it's up to my editor to fix this. Thank you, editor. Hopefully this was interesting to watch. Okay, bye-bye now. Here's a video I thought I'd make what? because... Yo, what? Wait, 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 wait. I missed it. Thank you, editor. Hopefully right. this was interesting to watch. Okay, bye. It was, let's make it 47 hours next time. Yo, what? Dude, I'm male 59 and my daughter is 21. We sit for hours laughing and enjoying your videos. In comedy, we appreciate you. Yo, that's so real. It broke my heart when you said you felt like no one missed you when you came back after a break. Rest assured, just because we say take your time, it doesn't mean we aren't checking our subscriptions every day to see if you're back. 52, no kids. I found Jack's channel way back when he was in the little wood cabin. I've absolutely loved watching him and his channel and his community grow so much over the years. Whatever it is he does, I'll 100% support. Thank you for everything, Sean. Yep, don't know how to say that. My parents got divorced when I was maybe seven-ish years old, and I was really close with my siblings or half-siblings, so I grew up scrolling through YouTube, watching videos, and playing games on my iPod. In middle school, I just I got my laptop and started playing the games I saw you playing as I grew up. COVID hit during middle school, and I barely, and I had barely any friends. I'd sleep through classes, stay up all night, stare at my phone, etc. Not a great time. Then close to freshman year, holy fuck. Then close close to freshman year, I met some of my friends back when the public started opening again. We all would play Phasmophobia, which I found through you. We'd all laugh at the videos and have our own fun as well. In a sense, your videos and content saved my life when I was 14 and depressed. This year, my brother got diagnosed with an aggressive bone cancer at 18 years old. I'm only a junior in high school, but now I have friends and met friends I met and bonded with over you. You. They've been here for me and supported me through some of my worst moments. I felt as I've grown into who I was and without your vids along with a bunch of others like Dan GDM, some of the etc. I don't know who or where I'd be. What you have done is incredible for so many people. Speaking from my experience, I wish you the best with everything in life and hope your health, mental and physical is getting better. It's not as simple as most people think. We love you, Jack guy. That's awesome, dude. That is awesome. I, again, I feel bad for Jack in a lot of ways. He should totally do whatever the fuck makes him happy, you know? He's done this shit so fucking long. He's been doing it for, like, however fucking long. Uh, yeah, like, at, at minimum since 2013, right? Like, holy shit. Yo, there's no way. Potassium, did you see the second video uh, that Lewis made on her? Oh, yeah, let me watch this video. Also, we're going to cut the uh, that video tonight. Let me see this. Any of you who posted memes about it and posted uh, negative stuff about it, you are absolute scum, and I fucking hate you because you made something that was hard, so much harder to go through. Um, and being a person of influence online, it's sort of hard to avoid a lot of things. Um, and it's hard to go through something like this, knowing that so many people are around and so many people know who you are and so many people want information and so many prying eyes on things. But thankfully, most people were very kind and very sincere. That's crazy, bro. That is absolutely crazy. All right, dude.